little bit. It was very good to talk to you, ladies. Oh, you too, sweetheart. You as well, yeah. And, Jibiel, right after I take care of this, I'll get back in touch with you, okay? Okay, for sure. You already know. Okay. We love you. Yeah, we love you. you. Bye-bye. So, yeah, isn't Rachel cool? I absolutely love her. I know. I love Rachel, too. Rachel... You know, I love all of you, and, and Rachel got a really good sense of community spirit. You know, like, like this is like the real community watch. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like we're like, like we we've been getting stalked and terrorized by fake community watch groups and fake neighborhood watch groups and fake cops and fake governments and all this stuff. Now we're like the real community watch group. Like we're like the re- we're like the real people that help people. Well, we've been awakened, you know. We're God's chosen ones right. to help other people. That's what right. I believe. Jamil, what um, I would love to hear, what is, what's your most annoying, frustrating, just mind-blowing, um, finally you're over it, the, the straw that broke the camel's back moment in game stalking? You mean the thing that made me the most angriest? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll 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 be on I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I don't like I don't like the, the structure of the gang stalking. I don't like how some fucking piece of shit fucking motherfucking country bumpkin ass motherfuckers can get a position of authority to listen to my phone calls and stalk me and harass me every day. I could have lost my life over it. There's things that I know about. There's things that have nothing to do with those fucking people. And I could have lost my fucking life easily. And they hire some piece of shit fucking white bread fucking motherfucking trailer trash motherfuckers to stalk and harass you. And they put them in shit they got no business being involved in. Motherfuckers got no business being involved in this shit. You know? And so that's what I don't like. Motherfuckers complicate. They they don't know how bad my my life been complicated a lot. Motherfuckers could have got me killed over some motherfuckers playing some game piece of shit trailer trash Walmart cards and all that bullshit. You know that's how I feel about it. Yeah, it's a good reason to get angry. I mean that but, was, that that's gonna make anybody yeah. snap. Right. You know I'm a complicated man. You know there's a lot of things going on in my life. Motherfuckers come around with all that bullshit, you know, playing little games and shit, piece of shit, trailer trash, handicap bitches and shit, or, you know, fuck. But it's all good, though. I'm not really angry. You know, I mean, you don't have to lie to kick it. it. (laughs) Yeah. It's okay to be angry because what what we've been through, we're allowed to be angry. Right, right. It's true, a lot. And a lot of motivation, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, I'm just looking at, like, motherfucker, like, real shit goes down in my life. Like, motherfucker, like, like, thing, like things, go, you know, like, people might not know about looking at me, but, you know, there's, motherfucker, there's, there's stuff that, you know, I, I keep it cracking, you know? Motherfucker, there's shit cracking around here. And they hire some bum-ass motherfuckers off the streets to play little games and shit. You know, motherfucker, this, this whole neighborhood could have turned into the motherfucker. Motherfucker, if I had a gun, it would turn into a sh- goddamn shootout around this bitch. And, you know, it's like, I don't, man, I'm straight. I'm fucking straight. And so, but I'm not angry, though. You know, I go through times where I get frustrated, and I think about all the things that happened to me. And you're talking about somebody who's been covertly drugged. You're talking about somebody who's had electronic weapons, psychotronic weapons used on them. You're talking about somebody who's had death threats. You're talking about somebody who has, has been you know, there's a lot of other things that happened to me that people don't know about. There's all sorts of stuff that's happened to me. You know, there's, there's, I've, I've dealt with, you know, I've had real enemies before. And so, I, you know, this, you know, this, this is just some bullshit is what it is. And, it is some you know, it's motherfucking bullshit is what it is. And so, um, so, you know, I think we're dealing with demons, though, man. you know, I and think, they will provoke you to angry you know we've talked about i have the perfect well i have the perfect picture for you guys right now so i decided i was going to come outside and smoke a cigarette and you know i was talking to the mexican flag earlier right right you were talking to who 
I was I was saying the the little signs like the different flags and whatnot. And uh, you know, okay, I um, thought you said fags. <laughs> so I come out and I'm smoking a cigarette, and I'm looking out back, and the flag is literally put over the the um hood of the vehicle like letting me know i know you were talking about this flag right 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 right. oh yeah they do that kind of shit yeah so isn't that funny those those are the scenarios that i have where it's like yeah we're listening you know that you were talking Mm -hmm. about this this and that is frustrating it does get to be very very frustrating but you know yeah no matter how godly and spiritual you are after a point the provocation does work and you do get upset you know i I feel like sometimes it's like a bully like beating somebody up over and over again finally you're gonna like be like fuck you and want to fight back right i don't think you fight back by necessarily you know fighting so but i do believe that you know i do believe that by being able to maybe cut off some of their sources do you, do how, do you find do, benefit? how do you think that we can do that, cut off some of their sources? Because this is a powerful source. And we're talking about military intelligence um, type of uh, electric devices that are, you know, completely destroying us physically and not even that, implanting um, voice-to-skull technology in our brains. Like, this is serious stuff. So how, how do you do that? There's, I think there's probably very few ways to do it, um, but number one, you have to think that, you know, we're under constant surveillance. I mean, I have a drone not even a block away right now, um, probably 20 feet in the air. Um, uh, you know, you got people all around, but I'm in a, I'm in a very, um, you know, po- highly populated area. So that's, of course, going to come with the territory. Um, when you look at the your population, your city population, you've got to look at your dynamics of it. I, to be quite frank of it, I don't think Michigan's safe and none of the coastal cities are safe. As much as I know about the system, I'd say that all of those areas are actually very unsafe. Where um, do you think is safe for us? Places like Utah or South Dakota, North Dakota. So like country area. just really out of the grid I, kind of yeah some place that's not highly populated that's okay. probably probably the only way that you're going to be able to do that but then i mean there are a lot of things that you have to think too that you're disconnecting from if i mean i think this is something that you have to really sit down and talk about i don't believe that you can you know naturally come up with a plan and then being under surveillance 24 7 and your phone calls being monitored and everything right because they're going to disrupt any plans that we have that's what i'm thinking right i wouldn't even uh, why even make some plans you know like what would you be planning just to get together they don't want that i know but like people like i i carmen Car- carmen's saying make some plans i'm just trying to figure out like what <laughs> Like, we're all being gang stalked and we all meet up, but what will we, like, all we can do is is, is try to produce, you know, try to get economic and produce things and make money and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't see too much of what we, you know. They don't want us to tell the truth about the gang stalking. I'm sure they're not happy about even this conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that we're um, getting this truth to other people. I think it's smarter if you're going to do that than to stay right in the public eye. You take their own resources and you use them against them. Yeah. That's what you do. You don't get scared of them. You don't run. You just do it. I think actually when you you stand up, like I've noticed with my gang stalkers, they end up, I feel like, getting scared of me. Right. I don't know. I encourage people to go out there and talk to them, like I like I've been doing for years. Right. Definitely. I don't think hiding from them though in the woods is going to solve anything. I mean, like, granted, it does give us. I'm not, hi- I'm not hiding from anybody. I think it's uh, great for CPTSD to like heal from the trauma, but yeah, there's no hiding. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Who the, who the fuck's trying to hide from anybody by going no, out in the woods and going hiking? There is no hiding. They have the technology time. where we can't hide. 
It's impossible. Yeah, but how how is going camping and hiking in the woods and having a good time hiding from any fucking body? Right, right, right. It's more so healthy though, like just to heal. If you're focused solely on going on a camping trip, that at the end of the day, when the camping trip's over, it was because you know you wanted to go, you know, relieve your stress and find common common people and you know get comfortable and then commonalities between the two, three of you or four of you or however many end up in the long run then you know that's one thing but if you want something to come out of it there does most definitely have to be at least a generalized scope like oh the end game is we're going to have found a plan to get out and talk to the people um and also develop this i mean i, I don't know i just find that if you want to, for me, if you're saying you want to go and you want to just do a camping trip and hang out and get yourself back, hey, that's great because everybody. Well, just stay in the city, Carmen. Just stay. Did you? Did you know? Just stay in the city and do what you're doing, and then it'll work for you. Then I wouldn't do. If I was you, I wouldn't do nothing that I didn't believe in. The only reason why I'm doing the stuff I'm doing is because I believe in it. What I am saying you know what I'm here saying? is that I wouldn't do I wouldn't follow no motherfucker nowhere. I wouldn't follow a motherfucker nowhere if I didn't believe if I didn't if I didn't see any potential in it. Like there you couldn't pay me to follow a motherfucker into the woods to go camping if I didn't believe there was something if there was potential in it. I'm only doing it because I believe in it. But that's what I'm trying to get at with you. What is what is it you say you believe in it, but what is it you believe in that what are you hoping for this for to come out of it? You have. I, to have I'm not help. hoping for shit. I'm not hoping for a motherfucking thing. I'm getting people together who are being gang stalked, and we're gonna hang out and go hiking and camping and play ball and have a good goddamn time. And if, and if and if whoever doesn't like it, they don't need to come. I'm not hoping for shit. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Shit. I've been running around passing out flyers for three years, interviewing people, Christless counseling people, walking the streets, talking to gang stalkers, and I'm tired of it. I'm going to go have fun out in the woods and play basketball and have a good time. And that's all and the you fuck there is to You deserve that. It. Yeah, you totally right. deserve Man, that. It's just time to heal and just I'm not trying be able to, to be I'm not trying like to impress happy. nobody. Fuck that bullshit. I'm not trying to impress no fucking buddy. I don't got a goal, and it ain't, ain't about to come up with one. And ain't about so to you come just want to go so you can literally just relax and right. enjoy your life? Right. Motherfucking right. And you deserve that. And, we all right. do. Shit, I ain't coming up. I spent three years walking around talking to gang. I want people to go out and do what I did. R- walk around the cities, passing out flyers, talking. I'm, I'm through with that shit. I'm going to have a good goddamn time, and I don't got a goal, and I ain't going to come up with a goal. And it might not be for everybody. Shit, the motherfuckers want to join, they better believe in it. If they don't believe in it, they better not come. Shit. That's that's just all there is to it. Wow, you can sense your passion there. Right. I, I mean I'm not it. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just saying for everybody listening, for everybody listening in. I'm just saying that's just the way it is. Right. Okay. You know? Shit, huh? I mean, you know, it's all about we are constantly surveilled and harassed 24-7. It is nice right. to just be able to go out in nature. No. Like, that's why I moved uh, out to the country. Like, I'm walking barefoot outside right now, and just grounding is very healing. Just being out by the lake, in nature, by myself, you know, like, it's very healing after this type of abuse that we've endured. Right. I was, oh, like, you know, yeah. I was in Atlanta in the city, and I was, I mean, it was, the gang stalking was times 100. I mean, it's night and day. It's just nice to be able to, like, spend time with God and be in nature. It right. is very all, healing. All, that's, that's, I mean, I will always preach that. Is. Nature is the best medicine for this type. Uh, if you're right. a targeted individual out there, go out in nature. Take your shoes off. You know, go right. camping, be one with God, yep. be one with the universe, yep. be with other yep. people with like-minded uh, love consciousness and heal. Allow yourself to heal because guess what? You just went through a concentration camp of your mind. You need to heal. Right. 
Right. You need to heal. Okay. You have to have that or you will go crazy and end up in a mental hospital. It's going to happen. It's yeah. happened to you. It's happened to me. It's happened to, it's happened to so many of us. Right. I know That's we're not the I'm only ones. It. I know we're not the only ones that have had to deal with that. And that is one way I think that really all TIs need to do. Go out in nature. You know, yeah, pray I'm to thinking. God. Be one with nature. You will heal. You can heal from this. You know, like, and you do need to just get away and not think about gang stalking, not think about passing out right. flyers, not think about all that. Just be a normal fucking human being and enjoy right. nature. You well, need that. Right. Or you're going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy. I, like, you need that. I don't that. think it's, a, yeah, it's, I don't think it's about even doing, you know, because people have been doing and doing and doing and doing for thousands yeah. of years. People go out and do every day. People, there's all kinds of people with all different sorts of causes, and the world's still fucked up. You know, I think it's just about being. Just be, you know, right. like, but, you know, just hang out and have a good time. Like, they're, they're, yeah. I don't, why rush for what? Like, a plan and a goal to rush and do something, then another plan and a goal, another, like just fucking be. Just just chill out right. and relax and, 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 you know. Be mindful uh, and just enjoy the moment. You know, that's what God wants right. for us. To be happy, no matter what's going on in our lives, we can choose to be happy. We can choose to be grateful for the things that we still do have. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though I've been through war and a concentration camp of my mind, there's still things that I can be grateful for right now. I have a roof over my head. I have food to eat. I have water to drink, you know. I have weed to smoke. I am okay. You know, like, there's things to be grateful for. There's people that God has put in my life like you guys. There's always something to be grateful for, no matter how bad off of a situation you're going through and I think TIs need to know that because it's when you're when you're going through it it's hard to like see the light at the end of the tunnel you know what I mean for all other TIs suffering out there I want y'all to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel Right, right, but I, but I, but I respect, you know, but I definitely respect Carmen what you're saying. If you like, if you feel like you know, like that idea you had about the beach thing, that was a hell of an idea. Yeah. You know about the beach is like my spear. I'm, I'm different around water and at the beach. I'm like so spiritual. It brings out that spiritual side of me, and it's so healing. Like I think that's awesome too. You should totally do that. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, all it's nature, just about whatever, it's just if you're about camping, people, <laughs> out in the people beach, coming, whatever. People come, uh, you know, people coming together in person who are being gang stalked and being able to relax and talk, like, that's a victory. That's a victory within itself. Amen. Like, that's the truth. That's the truth. You know? That is. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a big, just that alone is enough just to do it. Yeah, it's huge. You know, people get on dating sites and travel across the world or travel across the country to meet people just to get laid. You know, why can't people travel across the country just to have a psychological, spiritual victory over the, <laughs> the ter- street terrorism that's happening to them? You know? Yeah, yeah like, like there's support groups for everything, that's for sure. Well, you got to be careful with those, too. That's one thing with my mind control programming, I, I would like to warn uh your viewers with is a lot of the alcoholic anonymous program think about it their program and a program we'll see whatever yep. see they got programs for everything al-anon all of them those are all programs those are all like cult and mind control too that's been infiltrated with the hitler social engineering that i've been talking about you know they yeah. It's infiltrated everything, and those are programs. They they are very cult like. You got to be careful. Stay away. You know, if you want to get off alcohol and drugs, because that is one thing that a lot of TIs have in common. You know, we've been traumatized to the point where we can't handle it, and we go to drugs and alcohol. You can get off them without going to those programs. You know what I'm saying? You can you can get off that and do it just with your faith in God. God will help you. With God, all things are possible. No matter what illness you have, God can heal you. You know what I'm saying? So there is a way to heal, but don't go to those programs because you're just going to be programmed. That's where they uh, program slaves like myself. 
is through those um, right. AA, NA programs, the rehab, the mental hospitals, the uh, regular hospitals. That's where they do it. That's how, I mean, I could tell you, I just talked to my friend Javier. He picked me up from the mental hospital, the last one I went to. And I told him, I said, they did something to me. I don't know what they did, but I know they did something to me. They shot me in the ass. I was drugged. I was unconscious in a coma state for two days. I don't know what they did to me, but I know they did something to me. And he told me that I tried to, like, I stabbed him. I, I actually stabbed him with a knife. I don't know any of it. And it was right after that programming that I was under with the uh, mental hospital where they tried to, you know, well, they did not, not try. They did reprogram me. And, you know, it's heartbreaking to hear that because that's not something I'd ever do. And thank God he's a good friend. And he's like, I knew you weren't the same. I knew they did something to you, Andrea. I knew you would never do something like that. I knew that I believe you. Like, I know they did something to you. I forgive you. Like, thank God he's a good friend. You know what I'm saying? Cause I, and it, I cried when he told me. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because I don't even remember. I don't remember anything. So you have to be right, careful right. because anything with a program, <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous program, that, yeah, guess what they're doing? They're fucking programming you. That's why I want, yeah, that's why I want, that's why I'm all about everybody being their own leader. I don't yeah. like the idea right, of myself. Right, right, right. You don't want it to be cult-like, like an alcoholic yeah, Anonymous, I, with, because that with, is a cult. Me, it is a cult. Yep. Yeah. It's a call. It's a call with me. It is. It's like this with me. You do. You you are who you are. You're your own leader. You do what you want to do. Right. Like we all come. We're right, all coming right. together because we're being gang stalked. Nobody's above you, anybody. Right. Motherfucker. Right. Everybody can do what they want to do. Have their own websites. Have their own YouTube channels. Have their own ambitions yeah. and dreams and stuff. That's you awesome. You know, I'm not. I'm not a cult. And leader. you support that. Yep. That, that'd be great. just as bad as what the gang stalkers are doing. Right. <laughs> I'm not a cult leader. I don't tell people yeah. what they can and yeah. do and can't do. What color shirt you got to wear today. Motherfucker, you want a Walmart card? Wear this shirt, go down <laughs> the street, hop up and down yeah. on one foot, yeah. playing L green in the background, then twist around and jump up. And shit. I don't, man, fuck all that bullshit. You do what you want to yeah. do. You're your own man. You're your own woman. Do you. Fuck that whole ass shit. It's real with me. Oh, there's one of my gang stalkers. I started waving to all my gang stalkers. And actually, I live in the country where everybody's really, really sweet with Southern hospitality. And that's when it's for real. Because if they don't wave back to me in this country sweet, you know, <laughs> Southern town, I know, with the red Dodge Rams and the lighting, they, they're doing it right now while I'm outside. So that's why I'm saying this. Because I'm right here experiencing it. I, I guess I wish that your viewers could see it too. <laughs> but funny yeah. Now that both of us that have already experienced this, because like I said, I walk outside and that big, uh, the big Mexican flag. They had put it on a really nice right, car. Right, right. And then they put it. They took the hood of the car and put the flag on it, and then shut the hood so that it'd be on the hood of the car. It's right. sitting right out before I'll smoke my cigarette. It was like, oh, you were talking about the flags, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Every time you say flags, I think you say fags. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> and then now you're it. So it's funny because, yeah, it just lets you know that we're being listened to. Yep. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, yep. I'll wave to them and be like, I know you're watching me. Hi. <laughs> If you don't wave back yeah. to me, yeah, <laughs> there's my sign right there because <laughs> everybody's so nice here. Like, it's not like Atlanta where just, I don't know. I lived in the West End where it was hood, but people out here are so nice. So if you don't wave to me out here, I know, and you're driving a red, you know, <laughs> a red Ram. Those are like, I don't know why, but my gang stalkers are, are all in like red or black Rams. And the higher ups wear the suits, the lower ones wear like the red uh, or the lime green or yellow shirts and the sunglasses. Have you guys noticed that? That's one thing I have, I, I have yet to hear you guys talk about, but I've noticed is the dark, dark sunglasses, like the sunglasses that the cops use yeah. that have the cameras in them. They're yeah. all, all my gang stalkers wear those same, the same sunglasses. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
That's well, how I know. And they, they have this face like they pretend they're not seeing me, but I know they're watching me. And I'll wave to them, and they don't wave back. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You're one of them. Okay. They're interrupting the phone conversation. It must be pissing them off right about now. <laughs> oh, yeah. They don't like this. I uh, yeah, it's breaking up for sure. Right, right. Earlier, I could hear, like, the echo of you guys talking, and it was kind of fucking with my head, but it stopped. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they've yeah. really been fucking with my phone the past couple of days. I've been talking to you. They don't like it. Motherfuck them. They can take that. They can take what they don't like and shove it up their fucking ass. What they can do with it. <laughs> That's how I feel you know, about it, motherfucker. <laughs> they shouldn't be listening. They shouldn't be listening on the phone call then. Shit, I, man, you don't a, like, you don't like, right. Get your life right, y'all gang stalkers listening. Right, get, get your, your life, life right. right. Right, get your motherfucking <laughs> life right. You couldn't pay me to sit on the phone and listen to a motherfucker talk if I didn't like it. Shit. <laughs> get, your, get your motherfucking oh, life I'm right. Sorry, go find go, go find some business, you know? Yeah. yeah. Get your life right. That's what time it is. Right. I'm getting mine right. Don't give a fuck who. Don't give a fuck who. Don't who, who's listening. I'm getting my life right. You are. I'm By helping right. other people, I think that's you know because you're a godly right. man. That's how you get your life right. Yeah. We're here to serve right. other people. That's why we're Hell here. Yeah. It's gonna happen for me. Okay. They better make sure it happens for them. Yeah, I understand Well, you don't have to because you know what? We're God's warriors, but this war belongs to God, and our daddy's got our back. So, you know what? At the end of the day, we really don't have anything to worry about, and that's what I have to tell myself. Definitely. Yeah, and don't forget that. Take that with you always. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm gonna have to. We're gonna get back together a little bit later. I'm gonna have to hang out for just a minute and. Um, yeah, we'll come. We... We'll, well, go ahead. Go ahead. Me and Andrew will stay on for. Andrew, you want to go for a little bit longer? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. All right, Carmen. We love you. You know, and we'll figure it out. You know, whatever's going on, we'll figure something out. And you know, there's always a place for you, and what people, are, you know, what's going on. So just um, whenever you feel comfortable, just come back or whatever, and or. You know, you got Andrea's number two. As soon as I'm free, I won't be forever. I just have something to do real quick. Okay. All right, sweetheart. All right. Awesome. All right. Cool. Talk to you later. Thank you. Yeah, I I completely feel where she was coming from on that. Um, About you there, Andrea? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I completely feel where she was coming from on that. I think was I think what Carmen was coming from is like you know she's been getting gang stalked for six years, and she's been doing this all on her own. And there's probably a lot of anticipation there about getting together with other people. She probably got fucked over by her friends, maybe even family members, coworkers. Oh yeah, you know it, it gives you uh, trust issues and abandonment issues, issues for sure. I mean, right. I was just saying right. earlier, like uh, to a friend, I'm like, man. I don't trust anybody anymore. I trust God, and I, right. I listen to my intuition and gut. But, yeah, it sure enough gives you trust issues where you have a really hard time trusting anyone, no matter what, even if you have a good feeling from that person and you don't feel like they're, you know, a threat I or know. whatever. You know, it's still, like, just because of what you've experienced, just like somebody going through war, like, you still have that, you know, fight or flight and trap trauma in you where, you know, it's hard to trust other people. Right. And it's called faith, you know, and faith without works is nothing. Yeah. You know, you're right. And, and, you know, it's just like, you know, there's risk involved in everything. 
and, you know, going out, like, I like what you were saying, though, going out into the woods and going camping, isn't, that's not running from anything, that's, people do it all no, the time, who aren't getting gang stalked, what are they that running is from? being one with God, you know, God, right. you know, I don't go to worship God, I go to nature, and, Me too. That's and I you know, I truly believe that, unfortunately, Satan has infiltrated in the churches, it's not like, you know, it's not how it should be. So when I want to spend think, time with God, when I want to heal from all this trauma I've been through, I go, I take my shoes off and I walk barefoot. I go to the lake. I, you know, right. I'm, I'm one with nature. Right, right. And, and it's with been me, the most the other healing thing for me. Absolutely. As, and with me, it's the other way around. It's like, why do you want to stay in the city? What are you running from? You know what I mean? I'll, I almost wanted to say that, but I knew where right. she was coming from. But I'm saying, you know, why would you want to, like, what is the city? I think people who live in the city for so long, it makes them feel safe to be in the city. Oh, and, my God. You know, no, I wasn't safe at all in the city. I mean, I was so targeted in the city. I knew if I didn't leave, I was going to die. I knew right. that. My My right. gut and intuition told me, like, you need to get the fuck out or you're going to die. You're not going right. to survive. You need to go. And right. it's not that I'm, you know, whatever, running away, but I am also at the same time, I've already been shot at at the city. I've been so targeted because of the child trafficking that I discovered that I knew I had to get away. I knew it. And I knew right. that I would be able to heal in nature, in the country, just away from the city in that city life, which I used to love. Like, I loved living in Atlanta, you know. I was, uh, you know, uh, gay in Atlanta. Like, there, that's where all the clubs are. It was just so much fun. Like, I enjoyed that um, lifestyle. I felt like I belonged. And... Um, like, I never thought I would be living in Millersville, like, in the country. I I definitely would have never imagined myself here, but it has been the most healing thing for me after experiencing the gang stalking in Atlanta. Like, it, it, and I like I said, I'm still gang stalked here, but it is not nearly as bad. It is so bad in Atlanta. I mean, I'm able to just take my shoes off and go outside. I don't have to have my knife and taser on me, you know. Like, I can go outside and just not worry about somebody uh, coming and attacking me or stalking me, like, to the point where I need a weapon on me at all times. I can feel safe, which is where, in order to heal your root chakra, you know, you have to feel safe in order to heal. How can you heal if you're instantly in fight or flight and not safe? You can't. Right. Um, you know, like just being in an environment like nature is so healing. So, so healing for any TIs out there. I just totally recommend going out in nature, taking your shoes off, going camping, you know, just being one with nature. And with other TIs, yeah, I would feel a lot more comfortable for sure, with other people that have been through what I've been through that are here, you know, like in nature with me, like it would be more comforting for sure, which is where healing right. takes place for sure. And what do you think, like you think Georgia, is, have you met any other TIs in Georgia? Well, my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, the one from the photograph? Yes. Yes, the one oh, that I really? sent you. Oh, really? She was getting gang yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, right. God, yeah. And she still is. Actually, she called me uh, yesterday and was like, I have blocked helicopters following me. I'm getting gang stalked at work. Like, it's still going on even though you moved. And I told her, I was like, I knew you were a targeted individual, too. And but when right. we were together, I mean, I'm not kidding you when I say there was a time where every single fucking day I had the police at my door <laughs> open up the door you know like it was every day that I was being harassed by the police stalked and the helicopters would fly over our house for 45 minutes every day every day and so 
It was definitely being with another targeted individual. I mean, it was intensified times 10 for sure. That was my experience. Yeah, it's a trip, and actually, ain't it? my ex has had, um, like, I think Carmen was saying, where she's met these extraterrestrials, like, um, greys and aliens. Like, I think she's on a different type of, I don't know, mind control programming, maybe the Tessa programming. Uh, so she's on a different type of programming that I was under. But, yeah, she's even had experiences with aliens and stuff and has been gang stalked on even a different level. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Hey. Hell, yeah. You know, this is going to be cool. We, we're we going to get some cool stuff rolling. You know? For sure. We I need, believe like, that God speakers. put us together for a reason, you know? We need, like, guest speakers. See, when I was a conspiracy, when I used to do my alternative research, I used to have on guest speakers, and it wouldn't even have nothing to do with conspiracies. Like, I'd have rappers on, and I had, I'd have different sorts of people on. I was, I was starting, I was getting to the, I was starting to get to the point to where I was going to have actors on. And I would go find, like, people from, like, movies and stuff like that who are, you, That's you know. That's cool because like, a lot of them have experienced the same type of MK Ultra that I've experienced. Just, I mean, it's, hey, it's rampant in Hollywood. I want to see, I want, I want, that'd be the bomb if we can get Stephen Shellen on here. Stephen Shellen was in Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage, and he was in that movie. That. Have you ever, remember Stepfather? Ah, uh, no, I haven't seen that one either. I don't watch Canadian? a lot of TV, though, <laughs> or movies. Have you ever seen the movie Black Widow? No. Okay, okay. Well, Terry O'Quinn played in Black Widow, and he played in Stepfather, Stepfather 1 and 2, and Black Widow was made by the same people that made Stepfather. But in Stepfather, Terry O'Quinn was basically a homicidal maniac who I went from I've family to family. Yeah, I'm... he went from family to family, and he was like the perfect family guy throwing, like, the yeah. pig skin in the backyard laughing and stuff, like, Bobby, yeah. <laughs> good job, Bobby. You know, he was, like, making tree houses and stuff. Then at the last <laughs> minute, he would trip out. He, he would snap and just chop the family up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Stephen Shellen played the brother of some woman who he had last killed, her her and her family. And she was – so she he was tracking Terry O'Quinn in the movie, and Terry O'Quinn did a buck fifty on him. And down in, uh, in the living room of the house where he found him, Terry O'Quinn was like, "Stay away from my family!" <laughs> and they started cutting them up. <laughs> started cutting them up. And that movie was so like, I love. I, those are like movies I used to watch on HBO back in the early '90s when I was a little kid. And now Stephen Shellen is getting gang stalked. He's a Hollywood star getting gang stalked. Oh, a lot and of them are. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that'd be the bomb if we could have Stephen yeah. Shellen on. That would be awesome. Reach web, out for got, him and send him to the beach. <laughs> yeah, that'd be the bomb. Wouldn't that be the bomb? Well, yeah, the right. They're like right in your what? area. <laughs> I have to. Coming? I real quick don't oh, want Rachel, to interrupt. I this is Carmen, and I just I hopped in really quick. I wanted to say, first of all, I I did not want to make you mad. And by me asking something specific, I think I provoked something in you. And I have a tendency to kind of do that anyways. But I, there's so many things that happen happen to me in my life. I have a tendency to push people's buttons too. So I wanted to just really quick drop in and say I had to, you know, I, I have something else to do, yes. But I wanted to drop in and say, you know, I wanted to make sure that I, I touch base back with the gentleman that I had put myself in contact with. And, you know, just, just help me get to know you a little bit better because there's probably umpteen things that you said that, you know, I didn't retain. And I so I'm pretty sure because after we hung up, I was like, you know, I probably should just make clear that um, I'm sorry if I put, push a button or anything. <laughs> cause I no, 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 man. Trying. No, matter of fact, as soon as you got off the phone, me and Andrea talked about it like a little further, and I even said like when you hear the interview, you'll hear it. I was like, I see where Carmen's coming from. Like, there's trust issues with people. You know, we've all been, we've all been let down by people. We've all been right, disrespected right. It's by hard people. for us to trust anyone, and, but God, yeah, yeah. 
it's not even like that, Carmen. Carmen, I, you know, my my situation has been really hectic, and I have a lot of, you know, hostility naturally. And I don't, you know, I hope I didn't sound. I hope you didn't feel like I, you know, I don't want you to think like, you know, I, I, I'm a, I was attacking you any kind of way. I, I just, you know, with me, I've been getting gang stalked for three years. I started doing. I've spoken to over 100 targets of gang stalking in the last year. I spent wow. hours and hours hours counseling people like I pass off flyers I was the first person in the world to come out and say they beat gang stock and then I started a business I used to go to Bur the Burger Kings call the Burger Kings I was the first person in the world to actually create a company based on beating gang stock and to contact other companies in the business world about the subject of gang stock and IBM Coca-Cola all this stuff I think and my dad I used did, to work for IBM that's interesting that you I, just said that right I, I, Carmen, he's a I've programmer I've been going through this stuff for so long, back and forth, passing off flyers on the streets, you know, going right. I mean, it's at the point now to where I'm just trying to get – all I'm trying to do is get people together to re, to relax and have a good time and stuff. And I think, you know, me and you are at two different positions within what's been happening to us. My experience of gang stock it has worked in one way, and I've been through so many different things, and I've challenged the, the, the criminal syndicates through the, that do the stalking through the things I've come up, through my creative thing, and you've dealt with it in different ways. So there might be a misinterpretation. You might look, you, you know, when I say go out into the woods, if you're interpreting that as me telling you to run in the woods and hide, you know, I can see where you may be getting that from, but that's not, that's not what's going on here. I'm just getting oh. people together to hang out and relax and have a good time. And there's no, there's no inherent goals. There's no hidden, there's no, there's no hidden agenda and there's no inherent goals about we're going to get together so we can accomplish this and do that. That's naturally going to happen anyway. That's naturally going to unfold by itself. I'm just bringing people together to hang out, but I'm not mad at you about anything. If you, if you have a right to speak your mind and you are a leader and you don't have to apologize for saying what you were saying, that's how you felt at the time. So I'm not soft. I'm not weak. I can take, I can take whatever. So don't worry about that. You know, you're here with us. You're going to be doing this with us. Whatever's going to come out of it is going to come out of it. And you're a leader. You're going to do it your way with us. If you don't want to go to the fucking woods, you don't have to go to the fucking woods. You know what I'm <laughs> and you know what's funny? But you should come to the woods. <laughs> it, it's a right. Because, you know, I, can't so help but to, I can't help but to think in the back of my head, you know. I mean, I've been a part of this so long. It goes, well, dang, have they gotten that good that they've had a, a, a good program, a good uh, – systematic program put together where it counter it, it created countermeasures for the system so then whenever they found someone who's this is how my brain is thinking and I'm going to take you on a journey here someone who's Ooh. telling the truth so if you tell that truth be that truth teller like you know and yet I only tell it at a low level I tell people face to face too I do it on social media I constantly, you know, I'm, I'm trying to push this. I know what they can. Um, I'm constantly right. trying to push this. And so then I think to myself, do they have countermeasures that are so great that they could put a video up and make someone make you believe this and take you out to the woods and then not bring you back? <laughs> so, it, and it's funny I say it like this because we were just talking about fear and and I was saying, don't let fear run you, but then I'm asking you, you don't have a goal? Because to me, I'm thinking, if he don't have a goal, I have something to fear. <laughs> and so, and ultimately, I'm not apologizing per se for being me. Um, I think it's hilarious because, yes, I'll reiterate what you said a minute ago. It's proof that we're all damaged by the system. Yeah. And yeah. we have to. I feel like I have to be considerate of other people's feelings, and at the same time, I'm still going to be very strong. Hey, have a beautiful day, okay? All right. I believe that you have to, you know, remain strong and intact for yourself, because if you don't, then the enemy can get you at any which way. So you see, yeah. obviously, I'm thinking... I'm thinking in 10 different areas. Oh, my gosh, the enemy found me found a way to make me absolutely say this is, you know, this. I've been praying for this. I've been praying for like-minded people to come together and then think, oh, they developed a way to make it happen, and I may not come out of the woods. It's a legitimate thought. And then for you to go, you know what, screw
screw all of them. I mean, F you too if, well, that, you didn't say that, but, you know, you were feeling it. And like, hey, this is what I want. And I can't do nothing but appreciate and admire that. I adore the fact that you have compassion. And you're a man. You find women who have these different emotional things going on and they're in different areas. But um, I guess I, all I just wanted to say, you know, that, um, heck, that's going to be the hardest part is everybody being on one page going, you know what, we're going to have to be able to let someone yell and scream. And we're also going to be able to, you know, have to be considerate of other people all at the same time, but without feeling personally offended because, you know, that's we're all true bad because at- a lot of people will be. You're a gang stalker. You're stalking me like like David Atkins when he was trying, you know, like when people were trying to help out on YouTube. Like, yeah, yeah. if you've been through this, you always have to kind of like, you know, question that. And it's sad, but it's true. You it never know. Yes, you don't know. You really don't. So yeah. don't let me, don't let me make you. All I was really saying was, you know, I appreciate the way you came off. Like, hey, look, screw a plan, this and that. If I was to ever change anything about you, I'd say, hey, man, I've prayed enough, and I've seen God come out of, you know, the middle of nowhere and spare me from bullets and whatnot. Yeah, so me I, too, I, girl. I, defi- I definitely wouldn't be saying the GD word, and, you know, that might be something I'll keep, you know. I'd say, hey, man, you know, <laughs> but I wouldn't change anything about it, so... I just wanted to let you know, too, I'm not soft either. I am a leader. I didn't get here by being no soft, ignorant, you know. I don't think we'd still be here if we were soft, any of us. So I have no problem with you coming. And I don't want you thinking, too, that I logged off the phone call thinking, oh, man, he just went off on me. (laughs) Because it wasn't nothing like that. I really had something to do. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Rachel, are you there? Yep, I'm back. Aww. Okay. We're all, all right, back. Cool. Yeah, and, yep, yep. and Carmen, it, Rachel, Carmen, Carmen was feeling, you know, Carmen, Carmen brought up some real good points. You know, it's just like there's there's so much mistrust here, and now I'm not saying within our group right here between us, but I'm saying in general, it's just like well, because so much of the gang stalking that we've experienced, we have trust right. issues, obviously. They planted real estate in our mind. Yeah. You know, they planted, these people have planted real estate in our mind and they, they've done the devil's work and the devil's oh, yeah. work is the, the devil's work is the, well, the, the devil the, is the best tricker and manipulator ever, you know? Right. They're working for their father, the devil, their, their yep. enemy is a God. And so, tricker. I don't know, even think that's a real word. <laughs> yeah. The, and the so, devil you know, will fool you. Right. And come right, is everything right. you want and everything you need. So, yeah, with that, you always have to be on guard. And it is hard for TIs. Like, all y'all TIs out there that have trust issues, I mean, yeah, that's kind of what happens. And that's why I'm so gung-ho on, like, trusting your gut, trusting your instinct. You know when somebody's fake. Right. You know when somebody has negative energy. You know what I'm saying? But you still question everyone, and you got to, I guess, really pray about it. And if you have that feeling like, "Mm mm-mm, something's not right, just trust your gut. But, yeah, it does. If you're a targeted individual, yeah, you have a hard time trusting people, no matter what. Because we've been fooled. We've been betrayed by the people we love the most. The people that we would never think that would hurt us have hurt us. So, yeah. That's what happened. Right, right. They've done, they've done a number. They put real that's estate inside people. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, that's trauma, hon. That's trap trauma. And they planted a false sense of security into the – we have a false sense of security with the police. We have a false sense of security with, you know, with the, with the establishment. Yeah, I don't know. I don't trust the police. I don't know about I y'all. I don't either. Right. I, I, I don't have, have no false sense trust of the security. Police. I will wave to them and be sweet, pour my heart out to them, tell them what I'm going through. But do I trust the police to help me? Fuck no. Absolutely not. not, Absolutely not. Not that there's not that there's probably not not that there's not exceptions of yeah. There's always exceptions. 
you know, there's except there's exceptions to the rule, but never forget that the criminal syndicates are are operating a full fledged uh, uh, t- t- terrorist op. You know, there's a terrorist operation on us, and you know it's. Uh, it, it, it's real bad, and so we got to. Well, you know, I'm definitely we, on the top of the terrorist list because I am a full Bible BN. I never would have thought I'd ever say this in my life, but I'm a Bible thumper. I'm proud to say it, and I'll say it as loud as I can. Yes, and I love the Word of God, and I'm telling you, there's not nothing in the world that would get me to refute it. You're going to have to cut my head off before I take an RFID chip because God already mm-hmm. told me it was coming. And, you know, he showed and me it is the mark of the beast. this world, too. Yes, and I'll tell you, I'll lose my life for it. But you know what? I also know that there is a promise in that seal, and there are two deaths we have to die. They can kill your mortal body, but they cannot seal your soul. Amen. Um, you know I what? Have... We're all soul beings having a human experience. Our soul does not die. You're right. Exactly. You're right. So. You know, I don't. I find no sense of security in anything. I'm, I'm gonna be quite frank with you. I've been under such spiritual warfare many, many times in myself that even when I am thinking this is what I'm supposed to be doing, and not that I do it much, but I've had it in the past where I went, wait a minute, I should not have done that. I was not listening properly. So I, I I'll go back and question myself. You know, make sure because I don't have insurance in myself. When someone else can can come into my home and leave marks on my body and I have no proof, when someone right. else can you cut my brake lines, yeah, and when you can cut my brake lines and make me almost wreck and kill myself, yeah, when you can when you can break into my home multiple other times and leave all these little, you know, like my windows <laughs> slightly broken. You mean well. not to be that way, right? You'd be right. crazy not to be that way after what so, we've experienced. <laughs> I I trust nobody. I go to myself. I say, wait a minute, is that you thinking that? Let me make sure that's me thinking that. I'll put my phone away so that I know that there's no micro. Man, I've gotten. I get the aluminum foil out and wrap the Wi-Fi router and make sure nobody else is planting thoughts in my head. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> right. You know, that's, you know, these are the real things that we have to worry about, you know, as TIs, because with the voice of skull technology and the, how they can implant thoughts, like, this is for real, like, things that we hey. think about in our brain. Hey, you remember that? Okay, going back, who's seen that movie, Casino? Yeah, I have. Remember that I've movie with Joe it. Pesci? Joe, Joe Pesci had to, like, change the car, like, 50 fucking okay. times and shit? Yeah. Just to get out to the desert, it's like that's that's what it's like. This this stuff's so crazy. It's like you can't even do that. No matter how many cars you get into and where you go, like the <laughs> the, the, the 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 you know what I mean. The, yes, the, yes, the, you're, the, it does. You're tracked. <laughs> they got <right>. you. <laughs> and it's not funny, damn it. It really isn't funny. It's like you know what? Get off my damn phone. Stop listening to me. Stop changing my messages. Stop making me feel like I'm crazy, you son of a bitch. It's annoying me, you know? Yeah. (laughs) It does get to you, right? Like, how does it not get to you after a while? No matter how godly you are, how spiritual you are, after a while, you're going to be like, I'm going to fucking cut you, bitch. Dude, I'm talking to two people on the phone right now. Do you know how many times I've said this in the privacy of my home? Do you know I'm sick of you, son of a bitch, is listening to me? <laughs> right. Right. It does. Like, that, I just think that's normal. Like, you wouldn't be normal if it didn't bother you. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sometimes after a my while. I kids have said, right. who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm talking to myself. And they're like, you do that a lot now. And I'm like, yeah, I do, I do. I'm thinking all the while to myself. I'm talking to the people in the walls. <laughs> Talking to the people in the walls. Right, yeah. right. That's what we need is, is some is some people to come in, you know, like that Stephen Shelling guy and those people. That'd be cool to get them on here. I had a revelation. How long have you know. had your um, channel? Huh? 
How I just discovered you on YouTube. I'm wondering how long you've had your channel up. Oh, this this is a new channel. I started this in December of 2017, but okay. I had an older I had an older channel that had like over a million views on it. It had over oh. a million views on it and like thousands of subscribers, and most of it was conspiracy research. But then my first person in the world to ever beat gang stalking courses. I had on there. I still got those. They're from 2016. I still got those. Oh, I haven't seen computer. those. So yeah. we can go on your channel, uh, Rare Art, and see them? No, I haven't put them back on yet. Uh, okay, you should do that. So what happened to well, your channel? I ended up taking it down. I, Why? See, I was con- there was a lot. See, I, uh, there, it, it didn't have anything to do with gang stalking. There was just a lot of stuff on there that I didn't want. I didn't want on. You know, there was there was things that were going on in my personal life that that was one of the reasons why I took it down. It didn't have much to do with gang stalking. It was more of like personal things going on. And then my mother was finding out about I was not. She didn't even know. My mother didn't really know I was on YouTube. And you know, at the time I was staying with her then, and she and she she didn't want it on there anymore. My mother basically talked me into taking it down, but I wanted to take it down. And I had took it down right when I got out of jail. I okay. just decided to take it down. Yeah. I got yeah, you. So it, it, That's understandable. It was, I, there no, there were some things I couldn't shake. There were there were some there were some situations that were like too big. It had nothing to do with gang stalking. I ended up going to jail for something I did not do. A part of that well, was connected I'm sure to that me. was gang stalking because that's what they do. They falsely accuse oh, yeah. you and lock well, you up. That's what they do. Well, a part of me taking my YouTube down was somewhat tied up, but it was more tied to other things that had gone on during my past, my conspiracy research. And it was like right. the, the videos were, the, those videos were getting a lot of views and I could not move forward in my life without taking those down because they were becoming so big that they were, it, they were defining me. They were permanently defining me with everybody around me. And the situation. What do you mean by just, that? Because these videos, like the channel had a million, one of the channels had over a million views on it. Another channel had hundreds of thousands of views. Then another one had hundreds of thousands of views. And so the videos were permanently, the videos were going to permanently like write in stone. I would not, it would be harder for me to redefine myself with that going. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Cause I can people see where are you Okay. People, people were watching videos from me from three years ago. And and they were getting the image in their minds of me and me then and me now as two different people. Okay, me, yeah, years, right, of course. Yeah, right, right. Me three years ago and me now as two different fucking people. Yeah, me people, too. They were basing me off these. Fuck, they just people didn't even understand what they were seeing. That's number okay, one. Okay, I got you. That makes they didn't sense. understand what you know. They didn't understand what they were seeing. A lot of people okay. watched me on YouTube. A lot of people watched me on YouTube, and they had no fucking clue in the world what they were seeing to begin with. You know, that's how, the, in the, you know, the public's stupid. They don't know much of anything anyway. And so. Well, unfortunately, they've been brainwashed, sheeple. Right. Right. So I've had it's to read. It's super sad, but yeah. yeah. Right. So I've had to, but I still got, like, I got interviews with a whole bunch of, I still got, like, you know, I got some, like, <laughs> interviews. I still got a bunch of interviews I did back then now, but a lot of them I'm not going to put back online. For very, okay. There's some, not just the interviews, but there's some stuff I'm just not going to put back online, you know. You just but, know but, that it, you shouldn't, you feel like you shouldn't do it, like you have a bad feeling about it. it. All it would do, all it would do is bring me back to things that have already happened. Okay, and, and, I understand. You, know, you don't want to go through I, that again. No, no, I'm past yeah. that point. I'm past that point. But, but for historical, for historical reference, I will be putting some stuff back pertaining just to my courses though there are videos where i only talked about gang Gang stalking stalking. and courses to help people and so i will be putting uh, those will be coming into public view at some point just to show people so people can have a historical view of my work so they know i was doing this in june of 2016 right right that's that's key and important i think right 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 Right, right, right. right. I mean, unfortunately, oh, in this age we live in, we gotta have that um, that video footage, that evidence, you know. Yeah, right. well, for someone like me, I mean, I actually have tons of instances in my life, and then certain things that happen that I I was actually gonna be doing 
I said I just started my channel. I just put it up like a week ago. I decided, okay, I'm going to introduce myself. I have like a minute and 50 sec second introduction, which is really nothing. Um, but, What's your um, channel called? I haven't my named channel? it. I oh, hey, well, let yeah. me know and I'll totally follow you. Okay, awesome. Um, I, I, well, if I'll give you my email. I've got your phone number, so I'll give you my okay. email and then yeah. you can answer it. Yeah, yeah, I'll I definitely be one of your fans. Awesome. I have a blog too that I started some time ago, and it covers a lot of things. You'll notice that back in 2010, I was really engrossed in mind control projects, and um, I really got off into my crux of things was I actually quit. Uh, messing with that stuff after I found out about Sandy Hook and it being everybody was freaking hired for the case. Um, Were they all on psych meds too, do you know, for the Sandy Hook? Because that's one thing I'm um, on my own investigating, all the mass shootings and how they're uh, under mind Sandy control Hook and was, they're being used with the psych meds like I was. Sandy Hook was not a, it wasn't an incident. It didn't happen. Okay. Sandy Hook did not happen. What okay. happened was so it was a false mm, block staged completely, it. completely. They staged it. Yes, it was staged completely. Okay. Staged. And usually false flags people do die. So this was a false flag, and it 